Aloha! We're going to compare the top Southeast Asia cities to move to and let you know which is our personal favorite. One, two, three, Aloha! We are Kencho Quest. We travel to open our minds and our hearts. We will be comparing Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, also known as Saigon, Bangkok, Thailand, and Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, or KL for short. We've purposely left out places like Singapore and Bali because they're either cost restrictive or lacking facilities such as quality medical care. The first category is pollution. Let's start with the air quality index. I don't think a lot of people really look into the quality of the air in a lot of places that they're planning to move to, but for us, especially since we have kids, this is actually one of the top criteria for us is clean air. So let's start with Saigon. We've spent a lot of time in Saigon and throughout Vietnam in the years, and during our last stay, the average AQI was near 200. Now, when it starts to get over the 50 range, I'd say it's considered moderate, and then over 100 or 150 is considered hazardous. So if you think about it, hazardous every single day is not good. Many times we thought we'd look at the sky and we're like, whoa, it looks like it's gonna rain today. Except those weren't clouds, that was just small. We often try to keep our children indoor because of how poor the air quality was. We've had many days in Bangkok where also the AQI was over 200, but we also had many days that were good. So Bangkok is still can be really bad, but in general, it was never as bad as Ho Chi Minh City. Sometimes when I would take my daughter in the evening time around commute time, people were heading home from work to the grocery store, even just getting from our apartment to the SkyTrain and then from the train to the grocery store, it was too much exposure just being out side in that air for just short periods of time. I love Bangkok, but I wish it had clean air. And finally, Kuala Lumpur, which has superior air quality compared to the other cities. Now I would say it's not great in general. AQI during our stay there was average about 60, which is in the moderate range. However, when you compare that to anything over 100 or 150, it is significantly better. And we also had many days where it was under 40 which is considered good. We did have a couple of days that were in the high range and that's because they do a lot of burning on the island of Borneo. So you can have some bad days as well. The smoke blows over so on those smoky days, the air wasn't as clean. The other type of pollution we're really concerned about is noise pollution. All three cities can be very noisy due to the crazy amount of construction going on. However, Saigon is by far the worst and it's not only because of the construction, but because motorbikes is the main form of transportation and they love to honk their horns. Form of communication. So if you live near a road, it can be very noisy. Also in this category is congested roads. And I always think about the story of some friends of ours that lived in Vietnam for the past 15 years. And when they said when they first moved to Vietnam into Ho Chi Minh City, there was one stoplight. Today, there's about 10. Both Saigon and Bangkok can have super congested roads. In Saigon, it's a mix of cars plus a million motorbikes. And then in Bangkok, the traffic can get really bad there too. You'll be just sitting there stuck in traffic in a car or taxi, whereas you'll get somewhere much faster on a train. In comparison, KL is a much smaller city. So look at Bangkok and Ho Chi Minh City population over 10 million each. And, and Kuala Lumpur probably has about 2 million but they also have much better road system. So the roads are never, I've ne well at least, we have never seen it congested anything like what goes on in Bangkok or Ho Chi Minh City. So overall, the winner in the pollution category is that KL is the best pick. The next category is safety. Our family feels safe in all three of these cities. In general, I guess we feel safe anywhere in Southeast Asia, but for me personally, I choose Bangkok any day. And the reason why is because we've spent an extensive amount of time in Bangkok over the years and we feel like we know the city so well and you know I feel perfectly safe walking my son down the street to school even down alleys every morning and even picking him up I've never felt anything of concern about anything in Bangkok ever just in Bangkok and Saigon you're gonna have to be careful crossing the street and get used to that I personally feel safe in KL as well but overall, we're gonna say our top choice for safety is Bangkok. The next category is transportation. Let's start with Saigon. It is the, the least developed as far as transportation goes. 
They've been building a train for years now, but it's still quite not in place. Both KL and Bangkok have a very good transit system with the train. The only thing that you're gonna get in Saigon right now really is taxi or motorbike. And because of the lack of stoplights and the lack of people wanting to stop at stoplights, it's going to take you extra long to get places, especially during peak hours. Even coming from the airport, your only real option to get into the city will be by taxi. Also, Saigon, and again, in Vietnam in general, it is not pedestrian friendly. That means whenever you cross the street, you could be risking your life, which means you may want to get a grab taxi or something instead, unless you get really familiar with it, because there is a lack of crosswalks and definitely a lack of signals. One more hint, if you do want to cross the street, cross with a local. There's excellent transportation in Bangkok. We often take the SkyTrain and we also take taxis. They can cost around the same depending on how bad the traffic is at the moment. But I really love taking the SkyTrain into downtown Bangkok and then from there, there are raised pedestrian walkways joining the different malls. So once you get onto that walkway, you can get to wherever you want. It's really convenient, it feels really safe, it gets you up off of the more congested sidewalks. There's also some adventurous um, boat rides you can take on the river to get to some of the more touristy destinations. Those ones are a little iffy with overcrowded boats, but it makes for an adventure. I, I highly recommend you do it at least once. And the taxis in Thailand also include grab options but we're fine taking regular taxis too. The key is to know a little bit of Thai, and once you do, the chances of getting ripped off are very, very slim. Yeah, turn left, turn right, stop here. Those all help. <laughs> <laughs> and Kuala Lumpur, superior transit system all around, very good roads, crosswalks, stoplights, you got it all. <laughs> and then as far as, you know, they have a really good train system, but our preference these days is to take Grab Taxi. And the reason why is because our family is growing now. So it's actually cheaper now for us to take a taxi than it is to buy individual tickets and take the train. And when you arrive at the airport, you can get on either a bus or a train. We personally usually take the bus it's a super smooth ride. It will take you into KL Central, so you can get into the city center and then take a taxi from there to your specific location. In Bangkok, when coming from the airport, there is an option to take a train, so you may be able to use that to get close to the area where you'll be staying. And just one clarification on that, there are two international airports in Bangkok. Dom Wang does not have the train. Suwanapung is the one that does have the train, and which is the main large international airport. The overall winner for transportation is KL, but Bangkok comes in a close second. The next category is food. First up, restaurants. All three cities have excellent food. We love Vietnamese food, Thai food, Malaysian, Nonya food. There's so many choices as well in each city for an international selection. All three cities have a great selection of grocery stores. However, when it comes to imports, Saigon is a little bit lacking in that department but they are up and coming. Now, as far as getting your regular grocery stores, I would say the main store in Saigon is Big C. They have some others, whereas compared to Bangkok, they have not only Big C, but they have Tesco Lotus, and they have the Gourmet Market, which is super amazing, and they have another one called Villa. So there's a, a huge variety of groceries available in Bangkok, mainly because there is a huge expat community. And also in KL, you can get quite a variety of food and imports too. Big, which is Ben's independent grocer, is our favorite for imports, and they have a great selection as well. So groceries is not a problem in any of the cities. Now, what we really like too is that in all of these places, you can also get your groceries delivered. However, Bangkok has by far the best delivery services. For instance, we, there's one called Paleo Rabi, which is our favorite. They carry a lot of organic, high quality food, and then there's also Sloan's, which is, they make pasture-raised pork, chicken, and a lot of other just, you know, quality food, which is even hard to get here in the United States. I'd say the food selection is better in Bangkok than what we could get in either California or Hawaii. Yeah. Better variety, you can get fresh, high-quality, grass-fed. Now, that's not to say that you can't get in all the cities. It's just that Bangkok definitely takes it to another level. In all three cities, you can get prepared food delivered through apps like Food Panda or Grab. 
We used it the least in Thailand because we were able to get such good groceries we cooked in a lot for ourselves. But super convenient and affordable in all of them. Overall, it's a three-way tie for the food category. The next category is kid-friendly play areas. Saigon is the top choice for indoor play areas. I think because of the pollution and the weather, they have a lot of options that are indoor that you can take your kids to. Both Bangkok and KL have free outdoor playgrounds and play areas. However, they're not as high quality in Bangkok. Sometimes they've designed some pretty dangerous slides that end up needing to be removed. So please be careful, especially if you have little ones. If you see something like really cool, you better check it out and make sure it's safe first. Because actually we let our son go down this one in this one park that we probably shouldn't have. And later they eventually took it down. You've got to consider physics when you're designing a twisty slide. <laughs> KL has some amazing free outdoor areas such as the KLCC Park with numerous playgrounds and a water area to play in. There's also a suspended nature walk that we went on. Just a lot of great options. So overall for play areas, our top choice is KL. The next category is entertainment. In Saigon, they know how to do karaoke or karaoke better than anywhere else in the world. Sorry, Japan, maybe start in Japan, but they take it to another level. Bangkok, on the other hand, they're all about bars and clubs. There's no shortage of those. They're all over the place. So if that's what you're into, then definitely Bangkok is the place. KL is more conservative, especially when it comes to alcohol. But since we don't drink, it doesn't really make any difference to us. We have kids. In Bangkok, there are so many free family events, from events hosted at the malls, to communities, to live music at the night markets. We could go out somewhere to an event every weekend and not even have to pay. Our kind of entertainment. <laughs> Both Bangkok and KL have amazing movie theaters. I love going to the movies so much more in Southeast Asia than back home in the United States. They're less expensive, they have a better variety of popcorn, there are special movie theaters that are designed for people with kids, so there'll be like a slide or a ball pit for the kids to play in while the parents sit and watch the movie. There's more luxurious ones where you can get your own little sofa, have your food delivered. The movies is a whole nother thing in Southeast Asia. Both KL and Bangkok have a large variety of museums and amusement parks. However, the ones in KL are definitely better maintained and of, I would say, higher quality. We love going to Petro Signs. Thank you for correcting us on our poor pronunciation. We're sorry about that. Virjaya Times Square also has an amusement park in it. The museums that we've been to have also been of very high quality. For the entertainment category, the winner is either Bangkok if you want to go out and party or KL if you want more family-friendly entertainment. The next category is rent and the winner here is KL because your money will go the farthest as far as getting a spacious apartment with wonderful amenities and a good location. The next category is mobile phone plans with data. All cities offer great service at great prices. However, we're gonna give the win to Saigon because you get a ridiculous amount of data and their service tends to work everywhere. Even in the elevator. Maybe not a good thing. The next category is friendly people. We've met wonderful friendly people in all three of these cities. Thailand, you've probably heard about the friendly welcoming smiles, and it's true. Also in KL, we've experienced that Malaysians really go the extra mile to help you out. So we'll call this one a tie between Bangkok and KL. The next category is hospitals and medical. Fortunately, we've only had to use medical in Bangkok, though we've had to use it several times, and every time it's been amazing. However, we've heard great things also about Saigon, and we know it's really good in KL too. The next category is schools. The only one of these cities we've sent our child to school in is in Bangkok, and we loved the small Montessori school that our son attended. There's also a plethora of international schools available in the other cities as well. All three cities have a great selection of international schools. Our overall favorite Southeast Asia city and top choice to move to is while we love all three cities, Kuala Lumpur is our top choice for having cleaner air, pedestrian-friendly streets, great modes of transportation, and family-friendly activities. 
please let us know your favorite city in the comments below. For more specifics on the cost of living in each of these three cities, you can watch our Cost of Living Asia playlist, and we also have apartment tour videos for many of the places we've stayed. And please subscribe so you don't miss out on our future Cost of Living videos of Japan, including Osaka and Tokyo, and maybe some other places. And don't forget to hit that bell notification so you know when those are coming. Stay tuned for more travel tips and inspiration.